Hey everyone, it's Desiree and I am here for Simon Says Stamp to help with their new release of their collection called Believe in You. So with this or from this collection, I had received a sentiment stamp set. So it has these beautiful sentiments um, from happy birthday, thinking of you, congratulations, um, encouragement, um, just because that's one of my favorite, um, sunshine your way. So lots of encouragements, lots of happiness going on in that. So when you have a stamp set like that and you've got those different fonts, the first thing that I think of when it comes to my cards are backgrounds. And there are many ways we can do backgrounds. Now, don't get me wrong, you can simply take a solid piece of cardstock, use a paper or trimmer, cut it to a certain size that you're looking for, stamp your sentiment, and there's your card. What I'm gonna use here are embossing techniques, both powder and dry. That's how I'll differentiate them. I don't like to say wet and dry because that just doesn't sound right to me. So. For the first one, if you should have a background stamp, um, now this is called the Modern Rose Blooms, um, but if you have a background stamp, you could actually emboss using that. Now you don't have to have any fancy embossing powders. You just need a clear ink. I would recommend an anti-static powder tool, whether it's um, this one or the pouch. Um, and a clear ink. You don't, you know, if you want to go with white, you can go with white. Um, but basically you, you could just use a clear ink when it comes to the background. So what I'm doing is just taking a piece of cardstock and this is just regular cardstock. I've treated it with my anti-static powder tool and I'm using my clear ink so that I can stamp this image down. I'm then going to pull in my clear embossing powder. Now the clear embossing powder that I use is by Recollections, which is from my local Michael store. Um, I just really like that brand. So by using the clear, I'm going to be keeping the white background. If I used, of course, a black cardstock, then I would have a black. I would hold on to the color of the cardstock that I'm using and you can just leave it like that you know it's almost like when we um, dry emboss and I'll be showing this where we just do that on white cardstock to show the imprint you're kind of doing the same thing except you do have to heat emboss it so I grabbed two of my oxides age mahogany and bundled sage and I'm now just going to put my my ink down onto my mat, add a little bit of water, and just make sure this is all over the place. I'm not worried about, what I'm making sure is, is that the whole piece of cardstock is covered, but yet it has variations. Some areas are going to be darker, some areas are going to be lighter, and you can see that with that, and the pattern comes through. So I'm going to clean off my mat and then I'm going to come in with the aged mahogany. Now my first thought with this was to ink smush it. I changed my mind when it came to the aged mahogany. Your key when using your oxides or even your inks, if you're going to use different colors, dry between each one, between each layer, you'll have less mud depending upon the colors that you use. So this is where I changed. Instead of ink smushing, I added water and I'm going to do splatters with one of my brushes. I just want that hint of the aged mahogany. And I will come in also with warm lipstick. So you might look at those two colors and go, mm. but when they dry, they do match wonderfully together. I added the pink just for kind of like the transition between the bundled sage, which is kind of soft, and the aged mahogany, which is, it's not harsh, it's just dark. So kind of that worn lipstick bridges 
the two color values again in my mind this is this is how I process this stuff so that is one way to do an embossed background now another way is and I'm using a, it's another background stamp but it's not as large it's not a six by six um, this just will fill in a piece of cardstock and it's by Stampendous and it's called Oh My Stars so I was originally going to automatically heat and bought this emboss this but depending upon another technique that you use for this one I want to use my colored pencils so I pulled out my Artezas and I'm going to use just two colors and I want to color in all of these stars so what I did was I used one of my light inks this is barely there or no barely beige by Simon says just so I could have a hint of color I did stamp it a couple times just so that you guys could see it because it is a very pale color and I'm just going to color in those stars now when I stamped this I did not remove my stamp from my stamp positioner so having one of those the stamp positioners it does help in this instance um, especially since that was a clean rubber stamp that I used I can't see that because by using the ink first um, I'm able to color in these images now I'll, I'm gonna speed this up in a minute so I am keeping some of the coloring in but not all of that because I'm doing the same thing I'm putting the dark shade of the um, colored pencil down and then I'm coming in with the lighter color so here I've really sped this up I'm just gonna go through each of my stars put down my dark and then come in with my light but okay back to the stamp positioner process here so by doing that what I'll be able to do is take this panel put it back into uh, my stamp positioner and now use my clear ink to do my embossing because in case I got it outside of the lines um, or anything else by doing that it'll clean it up and I'll be able to emboss over that do you have to have a stamp positioner absolutely not you could stamp your image right off the bat with your clear ink and then do your embossing right away and then do your coloring this is just another way to to do this process so either way will be fine so please I'm not um, forcing the fact you know use what you have but you don't need a stamp positioner I would just if you don't just do your embossing first and then color that in you will be able to do that not a problem so you can see I'm now coming in with the light color and I'm almost done that coloring I've got shading I've put it back into my stamp positioner I'm going to press down for my clear ink I did treat this with my anti-static tool when it comes to my embossing um, I do stamp multiple times just to make sure I've got good coverage and now I'm going to pull out my gold recollections um, embossing powder just so I can have the gold accent because of the yellow stars I'm going to heat set that and then just by using a gold embossing powder I'm getting a little bit of shimmer or a metallic I'm getting that shimmer okay so I'm just gonna come over with my microfiber cloth where I used my oxides just to clean that up because they're dry so the next type now we're gonna move into the dry embossing folders um, I think they are wonderful I think um, they are a great alternative to the the full-size dies um, in some cases but I think they give you texture and there's so many things that you can do with them so that's what we're gonna focus in on this side now so I have a, an embossing folder that looks like sun rays that are coming down and what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to pull out my oxides and I'm using my Ranger blender brushes um, 
and I'm going to use three shades of oxides. I'm going to use scattered straw, fossilized amber, and squeezed lemonade, and you'll see them right here. So I forgot to hit record as I was going down. Yes. So you can see I have the dark towards the top and I get lighter towards the bottom. So because I have that raised effect from the folder, you can prominently see those rays. So you could either keep it white, but here by using an ink, it could be your oxides, a regular ink, whatever you have, um, you can get those raised edges and give it a different look. By using yellow, it's the look of sun rays. By using blues, it could be the look of the ocean. So you can get those different looks. I've trimmed it down, I've set it aside. So now I pulled out a feather embossing powders because if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I'm addicted to feathers, I'm just saying. Um, but uh, this one, you have your raised areas. Again, you can do that same thing. You can do ink smushing on this. You can do blending, whether it's with an oxide or your ink. For this one, I'm just going to let that take the cardstock, take the whiteness of that cardstock. So you don't necessarily have to do something. You're adding beautiful texture to your cardstock, which will also add a level of interest. Your eye will be drawn to it. So it's not that even though you don't do anything or use white, it will be seen. I'm trimming down my panels to be either four by five and a quarter or four and one eighths by five and three eighths, depending upon what I'm doing. Now for my last one, we can get pretty creative by using embossing folders. I'm going to take a piece of cardstock and a stitched rectangle die, and I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. But then I'm going to take a smaller one of those nested dies. Nothing fancy, just I have a set of nested rectangle stitched dies, and I'm going to put that on this panel and I'm going to look at my placement. So for now, I'm going to place that down in the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to cut that out and run that through my die cutting machine. So if you're just trimming your panels, you can, it's okay to do that afterwards. But if you're going to do something a little fancy where you're, you know, going to cut holes in the cardstock, I would recommend doing that first and then setting that into your embossing folder. Now, remember, you want to know which way the paper is going to form. Is it going to form towards you or is it going to go in towards the cardstock? And then run that through your, your machine as well to add pressure to that. So you can see there's five different ways making a background, but using the concept of embossing, whether it's heat embossing, so using powder, or dry. Now again, the sentiment pack, the sentiment set that I'm using is called Greeting Mix 1. I can't wait to see number two. <laughs> so these are the close-ups of the cards. I stamped out my sentiments, matching them to the designs that I created onto the card. Um, that is my favorite sentiment. You are everything wonderful. I just love that sentiment, the fonts. And then with this one, I raised up the embossed panel and then I actually embossed, heat embossed. So I have both of those sitting on that card in the opening. So again, five different looks using a sentiment set. Sometimes we just want to pull out those sentiments and now we have a great set of encouragement cards um, for anybody that needs a little bit of pick me up. So I do hope you enjoyed the projects that we made today using our embossing, whether it's heat embossing or our dry embossing folders. So many ways to use them, so many techniques to put through them from the most simplest up to, okay, this is going to take me a little longer. That's what I like to call that. But I do hope you enjoyed them. I hope everyone's having a great day. 
Also, just know that all of the links for the products that I used, and of course, a link to their new release, Believe in You, will be listed down below in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending just this little bit of time with me today watching my video. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe if you're interested, and if you are, you want to make sure you hit that bell so that you don't miss the next video. Again, thanks for watching, take care, and always remember what's most important. Always be creative.